सो द सुपर्ब हैज एक्सपीरियंस इट्स वेरी फर्स्ट पार्ट फेलियर एंड एग्जैक्टली इट्स नॉट चीप वट इट इज इट इट्स द इट इज द वाटर पम्प एंड थर्मोस्टैट असेंबली क्लासिक साइन दे इज अ कोड ऑन योर डैश बोर्ड विच से इज इंजन कूलेंट लेवल सेंसर स्लैश स्विच and i guess the code is p2564 i may not be right i don't exactly remember the number right now but we are trying to change the thermostat assembly without removing the intake manifold so matlab the thing is we still have to remove the throttle body but we are just trying to avoid to remove the intake manifold if your car is driven quite a lot and you feel like there's carbon deposit inside the intake manifold then it's a nice idea to disassemble it and clean it on the same time while you're doing the thermostat and water pump so what we are doing is we are disassembling the air box first then this connector then the fan shroud radiator fan shroud will come out throttle body all the fittings and pipings of the intercooler and uh, radiator up front and we'll create the space so that we can work so the very first thing is like the air box i'm not going to remove it from here i'm going to remove it from there so air box removed the sump shield is also removed from the bottom what we have to do is uh, we have to re remove the radiator shroud so as you can see this is like the radiator holder and this thing you can press this thing it's more like a clip and after pressing it enough you can pull the radiator shroud upwards and same thing is on the other side so after removing these th before removing these two clips of the radiator shroud what we have to do is uh, disconnect the radiator fan from the electrical system and for that there is this coupler this one you have to pull this tab out press it and disconnect the fan from here and then you can pull the fan shroud fan shroud out we are also going to remove the charge pipe one clamp down there one bolt here and i guess there are two more down there before we can actually remove it so what we are basically doing is we are literally making the way to the water pump right now so we are clearing everything up front so that we can access the water pump so radiator fan removed coupler disconnected now we are doing is disconnecting this pipe from that uh side and this all the mounting brackets basically uh, there is one down at the bottom then we have to radiate then we have to drain the coolant a little bit was drained in the process of removing the fan because this thing was in the way so i removed it for a second and removed the fan and reconnected it back so like everything up front we are doing is just to have the access to the water pump doing the water pump is not difficult it's it's the access to the water pump which is difficult so everything out of the way access to the water pump is much more easier as you can see it's completely exposed exposed and easy to work now so very first thing is to remove the belt cover remove the belt and then the five bolts holding it on its place so basically everything we did till now is just to have the access to this thing and in the whole process of changing the thermostat i have not shown you how to open a connection like these coolant connections as you can see there is a clip on top of that you just have to pull the clip around a inch back and then jiggle the connector while you are trying to pull it backwards and these are the coolant connections and all the charge pipe connections which are from intercooler to the intake manifold and turbo they are like clamps 7 mm clamps i've not shown you these things because i feel like if you are thinking to change the electromechanical thermostat body by yourself you are someone who works on your car maybe a little bit and you know all of these things 
so don't try to remove these type of clamps not necessary the clamps I just showed you the which have a clip on top they are much easier to remove much more easier to install back so basically just you have to remove everything which gets into the way and this thing is common on all the 1.8 TSI's and 2.0 TSI engines so belt removed we just slided it off now the thing is we have to disassemble the water pump by 5 T30's which are 3 on top and 2 on bottom and I guess it can be opposite as well 2 on top and 3 on bottom so after that water pump will be out so that's the basic problem it started leaking the water into the electrical housing which messed up the whole system like the view from the bottom of the water pump assembly as you can see there are two holes down so what we are going to do is like just undo those five t30s and pull the water pump assembly out and i feel like it's a more better way as you don't have to pull the whole intake manifold out okay there is a lot of disassembly involved coolant pipes intake charge pipes and everything but i feel like it's a better way and don't forget to disconnect the electrical connector at the bottom of the water pump and the five screws of the water pump are captive so they won't come out so the water pump assembly is out we have to clean the surface contact surface those two holes around those and then we have to clean the inlet or outlet of the oil cooler and then we have to place everything back in the way we in the reverse order we disassemble everything if you want to clean something it's a nice opportunity to do that as well my belt seems fine so I'm not really looking to change belt so done I guess everything is okay now have to clean those surfaces and assemble the thing back so the new water pump assembly is in and now we have to follow the follow all the steps we did but in the reverse path so thermostat uh, connected on the block and connected to the electrical coupler as well throttle body placed back onto the position now the things are left is like all the pipes so we packed everything back again uh, double checking that everything we disconnected is not connected so only thing left is to fill the water in i'm just doing with plain water first time to check the leakages and if everything is good then i'll drain the water and fill it with the right mix of the coolant and water and after driving on water for almost 13 to 14 kilometers now it's time to drain the water which i have already did and pour in coolant it's one by three concentrate so manage accordingly and in the next clip i'll disassemble the thermostat body obviously the old one which i removed to pinpoint the exact point of failure because there's no point of diagnosing a problem if you can't pinpoint the exact location of the problem liquid damage So I just opened the outlet of the thermostat valve which goes into the radiator and as you can see there is a path which is blocked right here how does it open if I start to rotate this so basically what this motor does is on the command of ECU it allows coolant to pass into the radiator which is required to keep the optimum operating temperature and as that demand arises it opens and closes accordingly so electronics failed but the thermostat was good enough so basically so basically the drive shaft of this wheel is the position from where it exactly leaked and on the car this is fitted like in this orientation 
like the motors goes upwards so just a drain hole at the bottom would have saved this part from the failure but I guess if parts are not going to fail how the brand is going to earn so business tactics